Yeah, well, as I'm teaching on the love in 1 John, it, it, you know, I'm talking about how to deal with difficult people in your lives uh, God's way. And that's what we're learning about how to handle them and love them. And so just a review is just really saying, Jesus is saying to us in the Gospel, John, uh, no, the Gospel, Matthew, I'm sorry, 5, talks about that in the New Covenant, everything is changing because in the New Covenant, you are born again, you have the divine nature of God, you have his very love that was poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So now you can love like God loves. And so he's calling us to that realm of, of loving. So he says to us, what does he say? Jesus says, now, love your enemies. And so Dr. Tom and I, as we read the scriptures, we pray through the scriptures. We embrace them. We ask God, as we say, love your enemies. We take it apart and we say, God, now, anything in us that does not love our enemies, we call sin, we renounce it, we see it nailed to the cross, and we now... In, want you to fill us up with your love for our enemies. And Holy Spirit, work it through us. We, we bind ourselves to that word. And whenever we step out of that, let us know. And so this is now how you embrace the word of God, that you meditate on it, you embrace it. And you want to get free of things that, that don't agree with the word. Right? And so, love your enemies. So we pray that. Then it says, what does it say? A ble uh, a bless, bless those that curse you. So God, anybody that does it, I bless. God, you said, don't return evil for evil, insult for e insult, but rather a blessing that I might inherit the blessing. So we pray through that scripture. Then it says, do good to those that despitefully use you. So God, now where we haven't done that, maybe, or whatever it is, again, we pray through that. And we then receive that yes. We say yes and embrace that. Holy Spirit, do it through us. Now, we don't get under law. We don't get under religion. We get under the Holy Spirit now having permission to, to now fulfill that scripture through our lives, that part. And then we pray. The Bible says then pray, uh, pray for those that despitefully use you and uh, persecute you. Okay, God, anything in us that invites people to despitefully use us, we call sin, and we remount it. We, nope, that's not of you, God, or persecute. We, I would get rid of that in the name of Jesus, and we pray for them, and we say, no, I forbid you to despitefully use me again or persecute me, but I pray for you to get free of that. That's not God in your life. And helping you how to, how to now walk through the knowledge. We're coming into the knowledge of love. And so the scripture says this in 1 John here now. It's chapter 4 we're on. says 9, says, in this, in, in this, the love of God was manifested, that means revealed, revelation, towards us that God has sent his only begotten son. Now, he wants us to know what the manifestation is. God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So this is God was just showing me. I, I am very prophetic. That is my uh, a mantle that I wear. I don't go around, you know, telling people that I move in that. I just, it just happens in my life. When the church was being built, the Bible says the apostle and the prophet lays a foundation. What would happen to me, me with the prophetic for building the church, laying that foundation, I would get a spiritual dream. God would reveal something to me, tell me the direction that we're to go. And I, don't, I didn't even know there's a problem. I don't know there's a situation going on. And, and, and I didn't know God was going to do that. I wasn't asking for it. But I've received my call. And so then he does. And then sure enough, as I give out that word uh, uh, you know, to the people that are involved in it, they, they would, they would, it would be just the problem they were going to bring. Okay, how God works. 
Well, anyway, saying this is that I have that I have spiritual dreams, and God is really talking to me about those dreams. And when they come, they're not just for me in revelation for me. They're prophetic for the body. So I'm going to give this dream again to you because God told me to give it again so that we can enter into it. And uh, the Bible says this, that in, in Romans 8, it says, it says that, we're an heir of God, we're a joint heir with Christ, if we suffer with him. That word suffering is, is entering into what he has suffered, how God has loved us to send his only begotten son so that we could have redemption, and that if we will meditate on that, and be thankful, be appreciative, that opens up everything else that God has for us because it allows us to experience the very love of God that has for us each individually and then for the world. And then it does say that in Rome and uh, what, is, what is it? Uh, I have to think about it for a minute, where it's located. I know where it's located. God, oh, Philippians. Philippians, uh, I think it's three. Three, yes. Three, where Jesus, where Paul said this by the Holy Spirit. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection to fellowship with his suffering, to, to connect to it, to meditate on it, to be thankful, to be grateful, to relive it that he went through with me and to be made like him in his death. So this is very important. So this is why I'm bringing up a spiritual dream here. Let it get into your heart. When I was young in the Lord, a couple of years in the Lord, uh, our lead pastor Jason was two, Scott was five, and in the and and I was I fell into a spiritual dream, and in that dream, a terrorist had had captured us. At that time, there wasn't that going on like it is today, and in it, they had my two children, and they were going to torture them. They hadn't tortured them, but they were going to torture them, and so. Just the anticipation of it, I the emotions I that happened, the feel, the sense that I had in there was unbearable feeling. I could not bear it. I could not go through it. Uh, uh, seeing it ha that happening, and I cried out to God, and I said, I can't do this. I can't go through this. And then I said, You don't understand, to Father God. And I heard him say, and then I woke up in it, I don't. And at that moment, the revelation came to me that what I was experiencing was exactly what Father God was experiencing with his only son. And it was happened in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, if it's your will, Take this cup from me, not my will, but thy will. And Father God, though he could barely bear what his son was going through, was unbearable, but because of his love for us, knowing that if he, did, if he took that cup from him, we would die and go to hell. We'd have no hope for heaven. Father did not take that cup from him, though his son you know, uh, sweat great blobs of blood. And so the Father's God anticipation of what his son was going to go through was unbearable. But yet, Father walked through that for us. That was our only hope. And, and it just didn't happen then. It went all the way through all those days until he resurrected when he cried out to his father, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Imagine how father felt at that moment. And yet, and then seeing his son go to hell and be tormented by demons for three days. And you read it in the Psalms where David uh, had revelation of the hell experience of Jesus and how awful it was, and how Jesus was crying out continuously, how much more, how much more? And then all of a sudden, oh, the resurrection power came on him, and he took back what the devil had stolen from us, and he resurrected with his blood. 
completed it and took it into the Holy of Holies and set us free from hell, death, and the grave. Set us free from the devil. Took back the authority and gave it back to us. Hallelujah. And, and we're talking about love. We have to be able to meditate on it. We have to be able to fellowship with the Father and with Jesus and be thankful and grateful and allow that to show us how much he loves us. And Jesus died for the whole world, how much he loves the world. We have to enter into that love for the world, for people, but the hate for the crime. Hate for the... We love righteousness, but we hate wickedness. We love the people, but we hate the sin that has them in prison. We never hate them. Mm, God talking to you tonight. God talking. Hallelujah. Well, like I said, we're going to grow in the knowledge of love tonight. Philippians 1.9 says this, And this I pray, that your love may what? Abound still more and more in knowledge, meaning knowing exactly what God's love looks like, studying to show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, looking at each aspect of God's love and looking at it, meditating on it, receiving it, and getting free of whatever would disagree in you, letting the Holy Spirit show you when you step out of the love walk. Holy Spirit, tell me when I, when I step out of the love Show me. And so we're growing in the knowledge, okay, of love. And then it says this, the, uh, knowing, that, knowing that love, what is excellent and sincere and without offense. Being filled with the fruit of righteousness. So when I get to know what the love is, get to discern all about it, what is good, what is evil, what is bad, what is right, and I'm able to, to separate that inside of me, then I get filled with his fruits of righteousness. Fruit of righteousness, it says, uh, that is found in Christ Jesus. One translation says that is found to the praise and that is found. That righteousness that is found in him. Not your righteousness, but we're discovering his righteousness. Oh, my goodness. We're walking out, out it, walking out the truth of that love. And it's not by, it's real important to get this, it's not by religion. It's not by law. It's by the discernment of the Holy Spirit that you have surrendered to, to now walk you through it. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. He's our guide. He's the spirit of truth. He's the revelation. He's the one that tells you, no, 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 don't go that way. No, 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 don't do that. No, that's wrong. And tells you, go this way. And so we have to totally let the Holy Ghost do his ministry in our life. This is his time. This is his hour. And so embrace him and let him be that best, best friend to you. Hallelujah. Not by what you do. You get yourself under law. You're going to get oppressed. Because the, <laughs> the power of, of sin is the law. So you're going to go, no, I'm not doing that no more. Okay, I okay, made a decision, I'm not doing that. And you get yourself under the law, then you keep doing it. And you get worse, and you get worse, and you get worse because the power of sin is the law. And one translation says, and one says, uh, I don't know. I know that one says the power of sin is the law. Something else that says similar to that, that you might know. Wow, is this helping you about love? So I love to go through 1 Corinthians. We did that this week. We went through 1 Corinthians 13, and we embraced every part of it, the knowledge, going to another level of love. We've been baptized in love, but we are in the middle of teaching it. Dr. Tom and I, in our prayer time, we're going to another level of his love. So we're saying, God, now your love is incredibly patient in, in Incredibly patient. So anything in us is not cre incredibly patient. We hate that. We want that gone. We embrace this, this, and we want that to have dominion in our lives. And we go through each one. Your love is kind and gentle. Your love, 
your love, uh, what does it say? Your love is not jealous, but it's, it's excited when others get blessed. Mm, hallelujah. It does not brag. It does not exalt itself in importance. It does not want to tell you its accomplishments. Love doesn't do that. Love's about others. Love is finding out what, what's important to them, finding their dreams, wanting them to talk about themselves. Love encourages. Love builds up. Love comforts. That's what love does in, in the people around our life. Hallelujah. So love never fails. Love doesn't quit. Love always believes, right? Always hopes, always does those things, on and on. And we prayed through every single one of them. We felt the power of God just hit us when we got done. And it was just like, wow. We had such an incredible moment. It was so amazing. And we, and we were receiving communion at the same time. So it was, we, we just had a God moment. I haven't been the same since that happened. Neither has Dr. Tom. Hallelujah. So we're abounding and increasing in the knowledge of love. We want to know what God's love looks like. And we want to, to, to search it out. We want to operate in it. And we don't want to know what it looks like. We want to be a doer by the Holy Ghost of it. And the Holy Ghost will produce it in our life because we tell him we want it. Praise God. So then Hebrews uh, 5, 13, and 14 says this, for anyone who, uh, every, everyone, okay, that is partakers of, of milk, right? Only of milk. He is unskilled in the works of righteousness, and uh, he is a baby. So what is this saying here? He said that if you grow in the knowledge of love, you will then be filled with his fruits of righteousness. But now Hebrews is saying that if you, if you just drink milk, you, you, just, you just skim over the word, you just read through the Bible once a year, and you just run through it, and you don't, you don't meditate on it, you don't get to hear what it's saying. Dr. Tom would say that to me. I'm reading the Bible through in one year. And, and of course, I'm a, I'm a slow reader. So it took me forever, and I'd finally be, whoosh, I'm done. And he said, well, what did you get out of it? I don't know. I just got the job done. <laughs> he said, well, stop it. You know, he's such a strong leader. Stop that. Medit take, some, take one scripture and just meditate on it, and, or just, just a few scriptures, and get something out of it. Mm, nothing wrong with reading through the Bible one year if you're, if you're skillful of reading fast and being able to remember something. I couldn't remember nothing. <laughs> I just was getting it done. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, uh, not that I haven't read through the Bible many times, but in a, in a different way, taking a section of the book, meditating on it, memorizing it, then going to the... I, I memorized the whole book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. So... so, so so I do do that. So I'm studier, but studier is different than racing through scriptures, okay? Hallelujah. And a baby, so it says you're not, you're not skilled in, the, in, in righteousness, the word of righteousness. You're a baby. Well, what does a baby do? It puts everything in its mouth. So a baby, when you're a baby in the Lord, when you're a baby in the Word, and you don't, you're not skillful at it, you just drink milk, you just, you know, guess what? You, you're putting good and bad in your mouth, and you don't even know it. Right? A baby can put things in their mouth that could kill them. Poison, nails, right? Stick their fingers in sockets, or whatever, you know? So, so we don't want to be a baby. But so it's, it says you don't know what right and wrong is. That's what that means. But those that eat solid food, those steaks, they dig deep and they, they, they meditate on it and they get it in themselves and they pray it in and, and they just surrender to it. They're eating the solid food. Belongs to those who are full age. That is those who by uh, reason of use have what? Their senses, what exercise to what discern what is good and what is evil. They know it. They know right behavior because 
They've meditated, they've done, they've given what I said to the Holy Ghost. They've allowed it to work through their life by the Spirit of God. They know what good behavior is and what wrong behavior is, what is right way to be and what is the wrong way to act. And they, they know that. And, and this was so neat because this scripture in Hebrews 1.9, I love this scripture and I've prayed this scripture for years. It says, you... You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness or, or hated evil and harmful things, sinful things. I have prayed that for years. I say, God, I love, I love righteousness and I hate wickedness. I hate it. I love the person, but I hate the behavior. Okay? And this is the promise you get in this. Okay, it says this, therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of what? Gladness. More than your, your, your uh, friends or your company or, your, or the believers. So that's the reward. And so I would say, okay, I'm being anointed with the oil of gladness. It's being poured out on me. It's doing that. And that's what we felt this week as we were praying through the love scriptures. The oil of gladness came all over us. And, and uh, so that's your reward. Praise God. Love the person and hate the behavior, okay? James 1, 21. This is a scripture that goes along with what we do. Okay, this is what Dr. Tom and I do. So I'm just telling, breaking it down. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness, right? And overflow of wickedness. So when I pray, God, remove anything that is contrary to this love, the knowledge of love. Remove that. What am I doing? I'm getting rid of anything that would be against it. I might not know what's in me that's against it, but I'm praying and I'm believing by the Holy Ghost it's getting gone, right? And then I pray, right? And then we said that. Then receive with meekness or humility. I'm receiving the implanted word in me. I'm receiving it. I'm bonding. I'm coming one with it. That is able to do what? Save my soul. Not, you know what I mean? Bring me into my right behavior. Wow, turn to your neighbor and say, I needed this. This is good. This is good. I'm glad she's telling me the how-to, so this really helping me. Okay, 1 John 4, 11 and 12. Beloved, if, you, if, if God so loved you, okay, loved us, that you might, then you ought to love one another, right? So now that very love that you have is to be given away. They know we are disciples by our love, all right? So no one, uh, no one has seen God at any time. But if you love others, right, one another, God abides in you. Oh, my goodness. He abides in me, one with me, and his love is made perfect in us. What does that word perfect mean? It means it's brought to completion. It means it has a full expression in us, fully expressing wherever I go, touching lives, caring about others, right? First John 4, 16 says this, for, it, for we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. So when I surrender to his love, I'm surrendering to who he is, right? And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Verse 20, 21. I want to say this. I got two minutes, but I got to say this one. Hallelujah. Because next week I'm talking about enmeshment. Okay. So, uh, hallelujah. So, anyone who says, I love God, yet has hatred towards another believer, this makes him what? A phony. Because if you can't, if you don't love the brother and sister whom you can see, how can you truly love God who you can't see? See, so you're, you're a liar. You, you don't love God. Ooh, that's strong. Isn't it? And this commandment he, we have from him that we who love God ought to love our brother also. 
Hallelujah. This is huge in our lives. So loving others. So what is he saying here? We have to be committed to his love. And his love will be full expression in us. We, we have to be committed all that Jesus is and, and, uh, and is now that lives through us. We have to be committed that when they see me, they see Jesus. That's what the word says. They see God and how he is, his love, right? When we choose not to love others and say we love God, we are a phony. Mmm, that's hard. Oops, I got to be done. Okay, one more. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah of God, then their spiritual child, has been fathered by God himself, and everyone who loves Father God loves his children as well. Ooh. We're going to another level of love. We're learning the knowledge and increasing, one scripture says, and abounding in the knowledge of love. What does knowledge mean? You need to know what it looks like and, and get the deep understanding. Okay, so let's end with this. And uh, so if you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right now we just pray, pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I just encourage you, if you have any prayer requests in that, call in. We have somebody at the phones. Love you. I'm Madison Rimnack, and I've known Dr. Tom and Maureen Anderson for almost 21, 22 years. I've grown up in this church, Living Word Bible Church, and I cannot express enough that they have, they are the epitome of grace, in my opinion. They are, they have the hearts to do what they do to, to everything that you see is, is their heart. It's not just something they put out. It's not just a product. It's not just a teaching. It's exactly their heart. God has birthed everything in them for this purpose, for what you see. And um, to partner with them would be the most honorable, most incredible blessing that you could ever do in your life. It's just, they are the most amazing people that I've ever met for sure. They show the most grace that I've ever seen in my life um, and anyone's life actually. And it's just kind of one of those things where you look at it and go, that can't be real. Um, but it is, they're incredibly real people. They're authentic, they're loving, they're genuine, they're um, just amazing. So Word for Winners is definitely where you want to be. That is the most incredible group of people who just are on board for God and on board for authenticity and that process within winning for God.